Good evening, viewers, and welcome to NCS Business and Finance Outlook with your study, Joel Bandit. This evening, I have with me a very special guest uh, to join in today's discussion, um, whom I will introduce to you uh, shortly. Uh, but I want to give a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. Last week, the last program, we started a discussion on the unprecedented rising cost of living. And we established that the issue on rising cost of living is a global phenomenon. And it is not, and therefore it is not unique to them. And we would have examined what are some of the government interventions in terms of policies, programs, initiatives, as well as as, as the kind of relief measures. And so we look at it from a very macro perspective. And today I felt it very necessary given I'm cognizant of the viewers, the ordinary Guyanese people. How how could we adapt? How could we adapt to this situation? What are some of the changes we need to make? Because I concluded that session by making a point that the cost, of the cost of living situation is not just a government problem, but it is also everybody's problem. Therefore, we can't just rely on government support, government help. We also, at an individual level, need to make certain changes, lifestyle changes, and so forth. And so today I have with me a young man, Mr. Machuga, who's a very, very, very brilliant young man, and I'm happy. Machu, thank you for accepting my invitation to be here. Uh, let me tell you quickly about Machu. If my memory serves me correctly, I first read about Machu when he graduated from the University of Ghana. He completed his bachelor's degree in finance. And there was a, a story carried in, the, in one of the local newspapers about Machu and his passion. And I like the fact that his passion was around financial education, educating people on financial literacy, which is very, very important because today, just before we, we started this program, Machu and I were talking about, we have small businesses, even small, not just the individual level, but small businesses who are struggling with financial management and financial planning. And so Machu started a show, uh, which is very, very successful, that is, uh, I believe it's weekly through uh, Georgetown Capital. It's, 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 it's what we call a podcast. And he has various sessions and they, they look at different topics that are relatable to our day-to-day lives. Um, some of you might know him from that show. Those of you who don't know him, you know, I, I followed I was following my truth from, from day one, I think. When I think of today's show, what I want to bring to the viewers, to you, the viewers, I thought that Machu was the perfect guy to have that discussion on an individual level. So, so Machu, thank you for being here. And let me just, for your benefit, Machu, let me just give you and the viewers a quick recap of what we talked about last week. So, we established that the rising cost of living is a global phenomenon. In large part, one of the biggest factors that is responsible for it is the effects or the results of the global pandemic. The world economy virtually went into shutdown mode, which lasted for more than a year. And shutdown means everything shut down, factory shut down, shipping shut down. You know, people weren't working, people went out of jobs. And, and so, so it was it was an unprecedented situation, a different type of, of, of financial and economic crisis or stress. Um, fortunately, we didn't hit the crisis uh, stage because governments responded quickly with rescue packages and so forth. And so, of course, you know, governments would not be able to sustain a rescue package for a long period of time. And so it was necessary to find solutions. So globally, as well as locally here, Policymakers and many other stakeholders were working almost 24-7 to find ways and solutions, come up with systems, uh, protocols, 
so that we could revert to normalcy. Normalcy in the sense to reopen the economy so that we get back to business and so on. That was a result. We have, we're still experiencing the effects of that. Like for example, um, there is a report by the United Nations which show, which show that shipping costs went up significantly, significantly. And the bad thing is, it's all, it already went up significantly, but because of the situation, those of you who studied the issue would know that the shipping costs for this region, developing countries, South America, Latin America, right, it went up way more than for other parts of the world, other regions, and so we have to feel the product, uh, brother. So what did we do as a country, at the government level? So the first budget of 2020, reverse a number of, of, of tax measures. There were uh, a number of items, a whole long list of items that we consume on a daily basis that previously never attracted back, that was attracting back. And so that push up the, the cost at the consumer level. So those taxes were reversed. There were a whole bunch of license fees and so forth that affect the small man who having his, his normal, his small business that he has to go, go through to get his license, get his permits, and whatever the case is, lease and so on, went up by 50 and 100 percent. Those were reversed. Then 2021, you had some measures that were implemented to cushion the impacts of rising costs, right? Because we are in inflation at times, globally, not just in Ghana. And so I did a simple uh, assessment to quantify what is the total value of all these measures that the government has, has implemented from 2020 to 2021. And when I look at the government, for example, because of the, the freight, they revert the shipping cost to pre-COVID pandemic level. So that means we are subsidizing that. We had increases in food prices and our utility bills didn't increase, our water bills didn't increase. So it means those companies, the utility companies, will obviously have to incur higher costs. And those are state owned uh, are state agencies. And therefore, it goes without saying that government is subsidizing that extra cost to, to, to not pass on that extra cost to the consumer level, the household level. Then there is a, in 2022 budget, there is a $5 billion uh, for cost of living measures. On top of that, you have a whole bunch of grants that were there previously, pre-2015, re-implemented and increased to some extent. Um, they had a threshold increase. So when you look at the total value, the tariff, the, sorry, the excise tax on, on fuel, which was 50%, went down to zero percent and that you know that excites that in terms of revenue brought in about 20 billion dollars in revenue so it means the government gave up about 20 billion dollars in revenue to take that tariff, tariff down to um to zero percent so when you look at it and you 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 you, 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 you add it up cumulatively to 2021 2022 the figure i came up with was was conservative 227 billion dollars which represented about 180% um, of the funds we had in the natural resource fund from the other sources, right? So that tells you that government is doing their work. They are implementing measures to bring relief to the extent that they have the ability to solve it. Because it is never prudent in finance to take 100% of the resources and inject it because you can still have more inflationary pressures. You still have to build up the rest of the economy. You still have to pay bills. You still have to pay wages to public servants and so many other things, right? So that is the backdrop. But on, on, on a micro level, I made the point that we have to make changes. And this is where you are very, very good at, Matthew. Uh, like, in, I could relate to an example, a simple example, you know, Previously, when I, before I got married, I used to do shopping. I used to do groceries myself. I used to go to the market myself. And every week, I go to the market, I spend about $5,000 in greens. That's about $20,000 a month. Now, now my wife is going to do greens, and she's telling me, she, $5,000 is not enough to do greens. It's now $10,000. That is double. That's, that's $40,000. I want to greens alone, right? 
So, so what are we stop looking with? No. But most of our population, right? I come from a rural area. We have space in our yard, right? So we can plant the kitchen garden. By simply planting a kitchen garden, the basic thing that we use in the kitchen pepper, eggplant, whatever the case is, seasoning, right? Plant your own. You could save automatically in my case for the thousand dollars a month. Right? So, so so this is the kind of you know drawing from what you do in your program, which is called common sense. You know. Um, tell the viewers, you know, give share some examples. Of course, feel free to comment on the macro on the macro stuff for that into perspective, and then share with the viewers, you know, some financial literacy lessons in the context of rising cost of living. Thank you very much, Joel, for inviting me, and good afternoon to all of our viewers. As you would all know, the world at large is currently experiencing uh, record high inflation uh, levels, and Guyana is no stranger, we're not divorced from the realities that other countries are facing. And uh, we must applaud the government from a Governmental standpoint, they've been doing uh, as much as they could to cushion the effects and to ensure that we, the consumer, the ordinary Guyanese, don't feel the brunt of uh, the inflationary pressures that we are experiencing. Notwithstanding that, it's also very important that we as individuals uh, adjust our lifestyles to suit what is happening in the world right now. So. Uh, prices of basic goods and necessities have increased, and that yeah. would necessitate a shift in our spending habits, our spending patterns, where we buy, how much quantity we buy, and so forth. So it's very important that even on the individual level, you pay attention to what is happening in the economy at large, and you make the necessary adjustments. Now. As a relates to our income, investment and saving are what we would tell persons they need to zero in on in terms of responding to the inflationary pressures that we're currently facing. Now, on the savings aspect, we would know that there's a limit to how much you can save. For example, if you're earning $100,000 and you only have one job, you can't save 110000 because you're only earning 100000 So there's a limit to that. Uh, but if you take up $50,000 from that hundred and you invest it, uh, there's no limit to how much you can earn from an investment. You can make $5 million, $50 million. You might not make anything, but uh, there's possibilities of exponential returns from an investment. So... As we experience the, the rising cost of living, uh, we have to make certain adjustments in our life. So I'm going to first talk about what we can do to earn more. Uh, because like I prefaced my comments by saying, there's a limit to how much you can save. So if you're earning $100,000 and the price of food and goods and services, you should spend about $70,000 pre-pandemic, and now, because of the inflation that has increased to $90,000, that means you only have $10,000 left to do all the stuff, which previously was $10,000. And In that way, you now have to respond. Uh, many persons would lament the fact that there hasn't been any substantial increase in the wages and salaries of public servants, or in the private sector, and we can have discussions with the base on that for a long period. Notwithstanding that, I think it's still important that individuals take control of their own lives uh, and not necessarily fully depend on the government to sort of analyst or the employer for those in the private sector to act as a savior. So what can you do on a personal level to... Before you make that point, um, that's an important point. Because what we have to understand as well, the rising cost of living is also affecting companies. 
it eats it is they have to incur same cost so fuel and all the other commodities that feed into their goods and services which means it's eating away at their margin okay. and if it eats into their margin it also affects the ability of to what extent they can afford an increase okay. right so i just wanted to add that in the yeah. excellent point so Back to the individual level, how can we as individuals seek to earn more income? And we're going to tackle three options that we have. Firstly, I'm going to talk about investing in yourself. Right. There are many persons in the public and the private sector that would have started a job 20 years ago and they might be in the same position. They would have made no efforts to improve their education, their certification, their skills level. Uh, they basically adopted a mentality of, uh, I'm earning this amount and I'm going to settle for this. There was no driving motivation or inspiration to become more certified, go get a degree, go get a diploma, go do your master's, uh, go to GTI and develop some skills. Or if you might be into cooking or whatever, go to Carnegie, get a certificate. There, there are many options. The government is also doing the Goal Scholarship. Uh, government subsidizing a lot of, of tuition fees to the University of Ghana, School of Agriculture. So the opportunities are available. However, many persons are still not taking the opportunity to invest in themselves and develop themselves because... I would say investing in yourself is the most critical investment that you can make as an, as an individual, especially when it comes to increasing your potential to earn more. And I would want to encourage viewers from the, from the onset to look at opportunities that you can utilize to develop yourself, develop your professional uh, competence, develop your skills, develop your certification, and make yourself more employable, make your, yourself more competent at whatever you do. And in that sense, you are laying the foundation now of potentially earning more because you're not going to get a, a, a promotion in your job. Most cases, if you, if you don't have a degree or if you don't, uh, if you have a degree, you want to now go for your master's or you have a certain level of certification and you want to go higher, that would necessitate you improving on your academic and your educational credentials. So it's very important that is on the individual level that you invest in yourself, read books. Uh, the internet is ripe with information. Uh, YouTube, TikTok, all of the social media platforms that you utilize can be channel in a positive way to develop yourself. Apart from investing in yourself, there is the option of investing in a business. We know that entrepreneurship has become a major uh, avenue of earning in, in the 21st century. And owning your own business uh, is another part that you can use to supplement your income that is, if you're employing the formal sector, whether it be government or private, uh, many persons are opening a business on the side, as we would say in Guyana, or you may want to leave your job and uh, develop a full-time business uh, where you can dedicate your entire time, resources, energy into developing a thriving small and medium business that can eventually grow into something large. So investing in a business is a, another option that you would have to earn some additional income. Uh, there are also some passive forms of investment, whether that be through the local stock exchange. Uh, I would always encourage persons to go buy some shares in, in a specific company. Uh, there's a trust unit college that you can go to. Uh, there are other forms of passive income that you can utilize to uh, supplement and add to your income level. Apart from uh, the government or the private sector increasing your wages and salaries, you may not be business-oriented because I don't believe that everybody can become an entrepreneur. 
Mm-hmm. But you can also invest in somebody else's business as a as a hidden investor, uh, and you receive a return on a monthly or a, a yearly basis, whatever agreement you come up with. That is also an option. So you may have the financial backings, but you don't have the ideas. But a friend may have a wonderful business plan, a wonderful business idea. Instead of just having that money sitting down, uh, earning 0.2% interest or whatever it is, you can utilize that money and invest it in someone else's idea. And you may find yourself getting a 10, 15, 20% return on that investment, uh, which is infinitely better than just having it sitting in a bank account or at home or your pillow or whatever it is. So those are some options that you can utilize to increase your income and thereby cushion the impact of the rising cost of living. And Matthew, with all those examples, those excellent examples that you um, excellently articulate, it all comes down to the first point you made, investing in yourself, developing yourself. A lot of us, you know, a lot of, a lot of us, I can say this, you know, quite reasonably, should be reasonably accurate, because um, we all have friends, we all have, we all interact with people, and so many of us spend a lot of time on social media doing all kinds of unproductive stuff. Definitely. So the same time and the same energy, as you rightly said, could be redirected to doing something positive, to learning something, reading a reading a book learning something on YouTube that will impact you positively to enhance your skill, your knowledge, whatever it is that will translate into greater productivity for yourself, translate in, in, in raising the, your own standard over, over a period of time. Definitely. And uh, I, I just spoke about the income generation and income creation, but there's also managing what you make which is another critical element of uh, surviving in these very difficult times because I have a few friends that sometimes make as, as much as triple the amount that, that I would make on a monthly basis. Yet still, you would find them uh, living paycheck to paycheck or anxiously awaiting payday or not being able to meet their obligations in terms of their bills or their food because they were not good managers of their resources. So not only how much you make is important, but how you manage what you have. And in that sense, we could delve into the topic of budgeting. A budget is basically a income and expenditure analysis uh, whereby you plan how you're going to spend what you have, and you match that against what you're bringing in. Now, in in a budget, and budgets are done on a national level. Uh, businesses have budgets, and individuals can adopt the similar principle of having an individual budget, which can help them to channel and chart to their finances in in ways that they know how their money is being spent. And at the end of the month, they don't have to wonder, where did I spend this? Where did this go? You can accurately track your expenses. And I think it's very important that you sit down with yourself, uh, take some time out from your busy schedule. If you're earning 100000 per month, you calculate how much do I have to spend on bills. And bills are fixed expenses. So regardless of whether... Uh, we have a pandemic or no pandemic, you have to pay bills. Regardless of whether cost of living is high or low, you have to pay your bills. So whatever it is that you earn, you already earmark $20,000 for GTNT, for GPL, for GWI. So that now leaves you with $80,000. Then after you, after you pay your bills, of course, food, uh, is another important necessity, a need. And you now allocate, all right, $30,000 towards vegetables for the month and groceries and uh, everything that you need to survive and to eat healthy on a daily basis. So now that leaves you with $50,000 remaining. Uh, you may have to buy 
uh, stuff in the home, uh, whether it be uh, bathroom, toilet paper, whatever, whatever other necessities that you need to survive that might be an extra $10,000. You have $40,000 remaining now. You still have to factor in transportation. That is, whether private or public, uh, gas is on the increase. So you might spend about $15,000 on a monthly basis for gas. Or if you're using public transportation, you might spend that same $15,000. So you know, you, you take that out of what is remaining, and you might be left back with about a uh, $25,000. Uh, and you would always encourage persons now to save at least 10% of whatever you earn. Uh, so now you take that out of whatever else is left now, you can use for other personal uh, goals and aspirations. So having a budget, you have a clear picture, a clear understanding of how you're going to spend your money uh, on a weekly, a daily, and a monthly basis. Now, in that same budget, uh, you may have had $40,000 for food, but prices have increased, and that $40,000 can't do anymore. That means you would have to cut back on something else. And many times what we would encourage persons to do is to cut back on their wants. Now, going to the movies every weekend or buying ice cream every weekend or going to the bar every weekend or going to the bar every weekend with the boys and or the having a few, every weekend. Those okay. are not needs. Yeah. Uh, of course, we want to have some level of enjoyment and entertainment in our lives uh, because we're not robots we, we're complete human beings and a social our social lives is a part of our entire being but because of the prevailing circumstances and situations you have to take care of your needs before you even think about taking care of your wants and uh, food transportation bills our needs you may have children, and in fact, you have children into that equation as well. Uh, if you're a parent, of course, taking care of your children is priority. So even some of your personal wants have to be sacrificed so that your children can live comfortable and not have to wonder where we're going to get food from today, or where we're going to get clothes to go to school, how we're going to get our books, and so forth. So the resultant increases in cost of living would cause us to adjust and focus more on our needs, especially if you don't have additional sources of income. You focus more on your needs and you try to minimize or cut back on your wants. It won't always be like that. I don't foresee that inflation is going to be high for the rest of our lives, or I don't foresee that you're just going to be earning $100,000 for the rest of your life. It might be a short term sacrifice that you need to make just so that you can survive and live a comfortable life in the short term. And when things normalize, you can always readjust the budget now to increase some more towards your social life. It's also important to, in the good days, you know, you save yeah. some for these times because in any business textbook, business or economics textbook, you learn something called the economic cycle, right? Where there is growth, there is, there, is, there is the boom stage, there is the bust stage, there is the recession stage. And so you will always, always have, you won't always have a boom. A boom is never going this way. It goes uh -huh. like this, right? So you'll always have a boom, you'll always have a bust, you'll always have recession. And so everybody should, you know, the, once we understand this basic cycle of how the how the system works, it, it it's also applicable to our life. Definitely. We have good days, we have bad days. Same for business, same for the environment we live in. So the importance of saving, you know, you know, you know, uh, in 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 that in in, in um, old people saying, or if, if that's the right thing, or in Creole language, we say. Saving for hard times uh, or saving for the rainy day. Uh, and that is very important and relevant to today. Uh, not good to hear, I would even add saving. Uh, this like, might not be relative to everybody because we're all coming from different backgrounds and we are in 
different financial situations. But for me personally, saving is a need. So as soon as I get my salary in my bank account, a, a specific percentage is already allocated to saving. And regardless of what I'm going through in life, that is not being touched. Uh, it can be as small as 10%, 5%, whatever it is. Uh, I would encourage persons as far as possible. You might not be able to do it on a, on a monthly basis because situations arise from time to time in our lives. But as far as you can, ensure that you're safe. Uh, we would also encourage persons to have at least three to six months of emergency expenses. And that basically means if tomorrow you're to lose your job or your business is to uh, go bankrupt, you can survive at least another six months based on what you already have saved. And I would want to encourage persons as much as possible to seek to implement that same strategy in principle in your personal life. Try as far as possible to have three to six months expenses saved. So if you know you spend at least $7,000 a month on uh, food, transportation, meals, uh, I haven't even factored in rent for those who may be uh, renting, uh, factor in that and try to have that amount saved in your bank account so that regardless of what life throws at you, because life isn't a very unsort, un uncertain uh, thing, uh, we're not guaranteed that the way things are today is what is going to be tomorrow. So try to have that buffer. And as you rightfully said, save for rainy days, save for hard times, save for the hard guava season, as we would say uh, in Guyanese terms. So uh, definitely we can't overemphasize the importance of saving. Uh, saving is a critical aspect of uh, living a comfortable life and living a secure life. Yeah. And we have one minute uh, and a few seconds remaining. I just want to wrap up quickly by by saying, making this additional point. Uh, yesterday, the His Excellency the President announced some some measures to, to make home ownership uh, affordable um, by giving out free materials, lowering the interest rates significantly to below four percent. Now that also ties into a property reduction strategy because home ownership, having the ability to own a property and given where the trajectory of Guyana, where we are heading, um, you know, those property value will double if not triple. And so the market value of those property can be leveraged to obtain capital, to do whatever kind of entrepreneurial ventures um, one would want to do. So if I'm, to, so, so to sum up what, with your presentation, um, Machu, you you spoke of of first point and first point the importance of investing in yourself. That is important. If we don't invest in ourselves to enhance our skill set, or to learn a new talent, or to learn a new skill, um, we would not be able to 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 multiply our income streams. So Correct. that is important. And so we have to pay attention to what is happening to you. You made mention to many programs that are available. Um, for that purpose, there is also free resources on the internet, and the internet is virtually free. Everybody has has data on their phone, and they could go and read something that would add some value, or look at a YouTube video that would add some value to their life. Then you spoke of 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 money management, budgeting, the importance of that, expenditure management. That is important because you can increase your disposable income by one increasing. Multiplying your income sources, having diverse income, as well as managing your expenses. If you could minimize your expense, you see that savings as well. Yeah. Um, the third thing is ent entrepreneurship ventures and activities, how to prepare for that. And so we are in an economy that a plethora of opportunities are emerging. And so we have to ask the question, how can we prepare ourselves to benefit from these opportunities? How can we prepare ourselves to access, to unlock these opportunities, to capitalize on these opportunities so that we can benefit, right? And so, you know, with that, I think we have, we have pretty much summed it up nicely in this short presentation. So, Matthew, and do you have any 
Do you have any um, closing remarks? Uh, I would just want to uh, reiterate and uh, encourage our viewers, our Guyanese, uh, the Guyanese public to uh, utilize all the resources that are available for your personal growth and your personal benefit. Uh, there are many, uh, many programs being implemented by the government. New measures are being announced every week to cushion the impact of the rising cost of living, ensure that you tap into what is available. Uh, don't be on the sidelines, don't be in the spectator stands. Get involved, go on the pitch, and do what is necessary to make your life easier and more comfortable. And of course, seek out ways that you can increase your income and seek out ways that you can manage what you have in your ways and what we would say in Guyana with common sense. Yeah. Machu, thank you very much for, for being with me on this program. You, you shared some, you made some excellent points. You've been done an excellent presentation. Um, I would urge viewers to, 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 to look at your program because you, you, you have a very educational program in terms of financial literacy, financial management at the individual level. So with that, viewers, we have come to the end of, of this evening's uh, program. So thank you. Once again, and join me again next week. Good night.